Hey, what's up, everybody? This is JT with Funk Crush. Uh, today, we're going to be uh, demonstrating how to use functions in order to build a program, and in, in this case, a game. Um, we're going to be using two different imports today, and one of them is time, and another one is a familiar random. And uh, I'm going to be using Smallville, which was a TV show, uh, but it's Superman, so anyone knows Superman is going to be fine with this game. Now, the only the only function I included was a text one and you'll see here that it's just nothing but text and that's the only reason why I included it. As you know I like to basically do everything live with you know uh, as I code I code line by line and tell you why I'm doing it and what I'm doing but this one is just nothing but a time-consuming um, function so as you can see the way you declare function is just you define it as intro whatever you want and then you just put in that function whatever you want now keep in mind when you use functions you're using those functions to build a program right and it's just because you don't want to keep typing these same lines over and over again so you just build it uh, so let's just go in. we have to build two more functions this game has a total of three so we'll build two more um, so the next one we're going to do is door um, so just to give you a basic synopsis of what we're doing is Superman has to go save Lana Lang from Lex Luthor, who's holding her in this building, and she's behind one of two doors. So Clark, Superman, has to just choose one of these two doors. And one has Lana, one he's going to die. So um, we'll put in here choice is an empty string um, because he has to choose. So let's we'll put a while loop in here. This and is a boolean operator, which just means both of these sides have to be true. So if a user types in anything besides one or two, it'll be true, right? Um, so if I type in their street address, their name, their high school mascot, whatever they type in, it'll just keep looping back and forth until they enter in one or two. Now once they enter one or two, one of the sides of these arguments will become false, therefore the loop will break, and therefore our desire desired result is achieved. So let's just put down in here to tell you to do something. So which one should you choose? One or two? And then we'll come down here and just hold that in choice. And if you missed my last video, input just simply means you're asking the user to do something And return, you're just returning what the person said, right? Whatever they type in, one or two, they're gonna you're gonna hold it in choice, which before was not a string, but now you're holding it in choice and returning it. So one last function, and this is gonna be uh, what the outcome, right? Yep. So it's gonna be the outcome. And in here we have to actually define something. So let's just uh, let's just call it Lex. And the outcome is pretty simple, right? Now. We we up here told the user what we want them to do. We actually have them choose one or two which door. So now we have to actually put the outcome of what happens when they choose that door. And the sleep function, folks, is just delay. So this is just used, in this case, a dramatic effect for the game. And the three, of course, just three seconds. And this will set to five seconds just for again the dramatic effect. And down here we're going to use, use uh, Lana 
equals. And we'll just put in here random integer. And we'll set that to 1 or 2. And the reason why we're using random is just because this to, so if they choose 1 or 2, it doesn't mean that 1 or 2 is always going to be the same outcome. So they can choose door 1, and it'll be Lana in one game, and they can choose door 1 in the next game, and Lana won't be there. So it's just a random thing. And if you choose to kind of build up upon this game or whatever you want to do, you can set the, the, the value whatever you want. I just, I'm just using it for the sake of example here. Okay, so let's do the actual outcome. Right, so now we know if Lex equals, um, and we have to set this to a string, of course. Right, because what we're saying is whatever the person enters in is going to be held in Lex. And because this is a random integer, we have to compare it to Lex, so we just have to put that to a string. And then now we just put simple print statements. Um, we'll put one more here about Lex. And then there's only two outcomes, right? So we have to do else. And that's it. So now what we're going to do is actually build the game, right? So this is our three functions, and now we're actually going to build a program. And again, you're actually just going to be calling upon these to build it. Now watch how simple it is to build a program, right? So we're going to do try again because this game is not going to end unless the user wants to. So what we're doing is try again, of course, is the game's over, do they want it to play again, right? While try again does not equal, I mean, while try again equals yes or equals y, and that just means either side has to be true. So if they press yes or y, the game's going to continue. So first thing we do is call intro, right? The next thing we have to do is call upon this door. However, what we're going to do is store it. And what's a good uh, good reference here for? Uh, let's use nail, right? So nail is going to be holding door because up and door function they're actually using they're entering in their choice one or two. So now we're just going to hold that choice one or two inside nail, and then what we're going to do is call a pound outcome, right? And see how I have Lex here. So let's just write outcome, and instead of putting Lex. What we're going to do is put nil because we're holding nil here and now we're going to pass it through outcome. And see, it's going to become this. So instead of lex, it's really if nil equals that, right? And then that's pretty much it. That's your, these three lines are pretty much your entire program. They're involved using all your functions. And now we just have to use a print statement to ask what they want to play again. So anything else, regardless of what they hit, was gonna is going to um, end this game. If it's not a Y or if it's not a yes, the game's over. And that's it. Wait, I think I gotta. Yep.
just make sure my syntax is right. Save it, uh, and we'll run it. Uh, and again, this is your entire program right here. So let's do it. And of course, for my demonstration purposes, it doesn't seem to be working. What's going on? Um, everything seems right. Don't have any errors. Let's just stop it and run it. Perfect. All right. So here's the intro, and now we're saying which door should Clark choose? One or two? So let's just enter one. In here, here's the time dot sleep. Right. It's just it's just simply dramatic effect. Oh, he saved her. Perfect. So now we're saying, do you want to play again? Let's just put yes. So which door should we choose? Well, I hit last time one, right? So let's do, uh, let's do two. Clark enters the room. His heart is racing. It's a matter of life and death. And does he save her or not? Yep, she got saved. So now we press yes, right? So let's just press it anything. Right? This game's over. Because anything besides Y or yes did that. And that's it, folks. That's how you use functions in Python 3. Um, if you want the source code, I know sometimes my mouse can be a little bit shaky. Um, sometimes I can uh, ramble on here. So if you want, just uh, and again, just to simplify it, there's your entire program right there. Okay, you define your three, you you define your three functions, and then you just use them here, and that's it. So uh, hopefully that was a good tutorial for you. If you have any questions, email me jtfuncrush.com. Um, source code, questions, what have you, and uh, thanks, guys. Take it easy.